What's up guys? It's Danica. It is 8.45 on a Sunday morning and I am not crazy for getting up this early. I am on the West Coast. I'm in Vancouver. I am downtown and I got here really late last night so my eyes are like a little bit tired. And I don't know if this happens to you guys but like when my eyes are tired they get like a little bit teary. Um, I did get a really good night's sleep last night. I got in around midnight and then I went straight to bed. I was so hungry, but I was like, you know what? I have to sleep because it's like a three hour time difference. So I went straight to bed and then I woke up at like 7.30 this morning. My hair is still wet. You know, I love a wet hair vlog. Um, I put on my makeup but I didn't put on any lip stuff yet. So if I look like I don't have any lips, that's why. Um, so I basically have a pretty strong half plus day today to explore Vancouver. I have never been to Vancouver. I don't know why. Um, I haven't actually spent that much time on the West Coast. I've been to Alaska, LA, San Francisco. I've spent a lot of time in LA and a lot of time in San Francisco. But I still haven't been to Seattle or Portland and I'm hoping to go there soon. I have a lot of really good friends who live there and I have some friends who are moving to Portland. So I'm really excited to do that in the next year. So this is my first time in Vancouver. Literally the number one thing I've always heard about Vancouver is that the food scene here is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And so today, because I really only have like five hours on my own before I need to like come back and get ready and meet my group. Um, there's a reception tonight at my hotel for my group. I literally, the only things on my list are go to Hold Renfrew because I really want to go to Hold Renfrew. I think I've been to the... I think I've been to the whole Renfrew in Toronto, but I don't completely remember. And number two is eat things. Now, developing an eating strategy for Vancouver is really not easy because the city is actually quite spread out. I don't have a car and I'm only here for a few hours. So I guess I could like Uber around. It's also Sunday, which makes it challenging because store hours are a little bit different on Sunday. So instead of, I spent like a lot of time this morning, I actually woke up around 7.30 this morning, and I spent a lot of time trying to develop an eating strategy. I know that sounds crazy, the idea of an eating strategy, but having worked in food before and having a lot of friends who are really, really into the restaurant experience and the dining scenes in different cities, I definitely approach visiting a new city with a strategy because you only have so much stomach space and so many meals to fill. So basically because my hours are so limited, I have just, I'm just gonna target the downtown region on Robson. I heard that um, on the west side of Robson there are some really amazing Chinese restaurants. I really wanna go to this restaurant called Dynasty Dumplings. I've read amazing things about it. It comes highly recommended. I've also heard great things about fish tacos in the city. My friend David Lanzel is a veteran travel writer and he has literally been everywhere and he has this encyclopedic knowledge of the best things in every state and city and region. And he texted me and he was like, you have to get fish tacos. There's a great coffee place he recommended. So I'm gonna do this those things and I'm gonna walk down the street so basically I'm actually staying in hotel and I guess this must be like a really really nice part of town because my hotel actually has like a Louis Vuitton and a Gucci inside of it which is huge trouble for me I did check the prices though and the prices are really not that different from the States even though um, the dollar is quite strong right now and I think it's like um, for every can like it's 75 cents like a I don't know how to describe this. So like one Canadian dollar is 75 cents in um, in terms of, you know, conversion. So I thought I would come here and get like, you know, be able to buy stuff. It's like it's basically having like a 25% discount on everything. But it's not the case here because I guess they've adjusted the luxury prices here. This is like neither here nor there. I wasn't going to buy like a ton of stuff. But when I was in England, for example, tons of stuff was a lot less expensive because of Brexit and because of the drop in the pound. So... I'm mainly going to be eating and shopping when I'm in Vancouver. I can't wait. I'm going to take you guys with me. I don't know how weird it's going to be walking around with a camera, so I made do it with my iPhone. So come along with me as we explore Vancouver. I'm walking down the street in Vancouver and there's like no one around. Now granted, it's like Sunday and it's before noon, so a lot of stores are open. I'm heading to Hold Renfrew, we'll see what's going on. Sometimes I forget what it's like to live in a city where they have like rules about when stores can be open because in New York, like stores are open all the time. Um, even on Sundays, a lot of them open at like nine or 10. So it's kind of weird to be in this situation 
where it's such an empty city. I mean, there's a lot of traffic, you can see around me. But nothing is open. Look, this is pretty cool. There's a Tiffany that's built into like an overpass, a glass overpass. I guess this is part of the second Here we are at Holt Renfrew. I'm gonna go in. Hopefully it's open. No one's going in. Maybe it's not open. It's like 11 o'clock. Yes, it is open. Hey guys, what's up? I am back from my day walking around Vancouver. To be honest, I didn't do a whole lot today and I'll tell you why. So basically I left the hotel, no I tried to leave the hotel at like 9 a.m. and what I realized was that it's Sunday and there was like nothing open at like 9 a.m. So I actually decided to just have breakfast in the hotel which was amazing. I'm staying at the Fairmont in Vancouver and their breakfast is the buffet is unbelievable. Like, I mean, there's nothing like a good breakfast buffet in a hotel, but this one was especially incredible. I think I literally, there were, it wasn't too crowded either. So actually I was down there. They have everything in these like beautiful enamel pots. And I actually opened up one of the pots and it was just like the most beautiful bacon I'd ever seen, which is like tons of it. And I said to this other guy who was standing there at the buffet with me, I just looked at him and totally dead serious. And I was like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Anyway, so I had breakfast. I came back, I did a little work because it was still early. I guess the stores around here on Sundays don't really open until 11 or 12. So at 11, I headed out to hold rent through, which I really, really wanted to see anyway. And I went there, I bought myself an Acne Studio sweater, which I'm super excited about. It's sort of like a really chunky knit vest with a giant loop thing that wraps around. Um, I'll show you. Hold rent through. I haven't even unpacked it yet because I came to drop it off and then I went out again. So here, look, it's like black and I love like a chunky black rib knit. Um, here, I'll show you. It's actually sort of obsessed. Where's up? Okay. So you put your sleeves through the arms like this. And then there's like this one long flappy bit. And you go like this. And it's like a cocoon. So yeah, so that's what I got. So I bought a sweater and then, what did I do? Oh, then I also went to the Hudson Bay Company um, and I checked out that department store. The department stores here in Vancouver are amazing. They're not like, I mean, in New York, we have like different tiers of department stores. We've got like the Bergdorf's and the Barney's, which are like super high end and Saks also, which is super high end. And then you have like the Bloomingdale's, which is like upper mid end. And it has a lot of contemporary stuff along with designer things, but they have like different kinds of designers, right? So like Bloomingdale's, I am like, my impression is that Bloomingdale's has fewer edgy designers, whereas Barney's has more like edgy designers and like Bergdorf's will do like more edgy luxury. I don't know, they're all like very slightly differentiated. The department stores here all have amazing brands, unbelievable brands, like the hottest brands from the runways in Paris. So I've been very impressed. So I went to Holt and Fru, then the Hudson Bay Company, and then from there, I came back to the hotel, dropped some stuff off, took a little break, and then I was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna go out and try to go to that dynasty dumpling place that my friend David was telling me about. So I walked up there, it was about like a 10 block walk. So not too long, it was, it was like downhill, so also it was like easy. So I get there, the line was so crazy. So I ended up not waiting in line to eat there. And then I walked, I turned around, so I did like a little shopping. I went to Tim Hortons, which like, you know, you have to do when you go to Canada, get like an amazing donut. The coffee there is also really good, so I, I had a coffee and then, um, I was like, you know what? It's like 1.30. And I looked and I realized that Prince William and Kate Middleton are here in town this weekend. So their schedule was published on the internet. And so I decided to spend my afternoon, you know, hanging out outside of where their event was, waiting for them to come out. So I, that's what I did. Um, I went down, it was just by Nordstrom, it was on Richard Street. So I stood there, it wasn't actually too bad. I, I stood there for like 45 minutes. It was like no, better or worse than 
going to like a concert and standing there in general admission waiting for your favorite band to come out. So I did that and then they came out. I'm gonna insert footage here of them driving by and waving. And after that, I was sort of giddy from like my near brush with royalty. I mean, they were really like five feet away in a car and drove by pretty quickly and I only saw like their fingertips, but <laughs> it was like a near brush with royalty. So after that, I went to Nordstrom because it was close by and I wanted to like do my social media and wanted to be indoors away from the crowds. So I went there and I looked around. They, have, they also have an amazing selection of designers at that Nordstrom. I don't know if all Nordstroms are like that. We don't have... Nordstrom yet like we have like a Nordstrom discount store like the Nordstrom rack in New York City I think we have a couple of those and I think they're actually opening a real Nord Nordstrom like a full price Nordstrom I think I don't know if it's open yet to be honest I haven't really been following but I think they're opening either uptown or down in Tribeca soon I'm not sure um, but I, I don't I've never really spent a lot of time in Nordstrom but this is an amazing one so I went there spent some time there walked around looked at shoes they have a great shoe section which I think everybody knows that for me um, and then I came back so now I have I had two hours until my reception for the official launch of this trip that I'm on this program um, so I actually have a ton of work to do beforehand. I just don't know if I'm going to get anything done just because I want to take like a little break for the reception. So I might go to the reception for like a little while and then just come back and work at night. One of the great benefits of working when you're not on your time zone, like when I'm in Europe, the best thing is like I can spend all morning doing like you know whatever i want to do like you know going out for breakfast and lunch and sightseeing and just like hanging out and going shopping and then i work from like 3 p.m until like 10 p.m or 3 until 9 and then go out for like a late dinner which like most of my friends do in europe anyway they have late dinners and here in the west coast what's great is that i tend to wake up pretty early anyway so tomorrow morning for example i'll probably wake up at 5 and work from like 5 30 to uh, like 7 30 8 30 i don't know but i'm gonna wake up early and i'll get like almost a full day's work in um before i leave for my full day of program and like itinerary and like the programming stuff that, that we've been scheduled to do anyway so that's what i've been doing i don't i think this might be kind of a boring vlog i'm sorry <laughs> i actually didn't do that much today i had this moment today when i realized that the thing about going to North American cities is that sure, there's like a lot to see and there's a lot to do and there's a lot to experience. And there are a lot of like observation, like very subtle observational things that you notice when you're traveling around. But at the end of the day, when you're, when you're in a North American city, by and large, I'm always just doing the normal stuff that people do in cities. Um, I think I'm doing more sightseeing stuff tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna take my camera along with me and hopefully we'll like like shoot some of that. I think we're doing some pretty cool stuff. There's like a bridge we're going to see, um, just a lot of the super iconic things about Vancouver and British Columbia in this region. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I am so excited to be here in Vancouver and checking it out for the first time. So see you tomorrow, bye.